on Custom Works, we're going to be bonding that cool rear glass, we're going to be fixing the headliner, and we're going doing that, it's just for show, but it's the engine cover. So let's get to the workshop. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, if you remember that fiberglass uh, rebate that we made the other week, so we've marked the glass um, up to the rebate in the window, and we're going to take that as like our minimum mark. We can't go any more than that, it will show a bit of rebate, so we'll probably move the line in a little bit. And uh, yeah, the line's marked, let's get to blacking it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mask off a, you know, a border all the way around here. But, as you can see, I'm not going to mask just to the line of my rebate. So you see, I just cut the rebate out with the angle grinder. Um, it's narrower there than it is there. So what I'll do is, I'll make a new mark around that is equal all the way around. And I'll actually mask to that. Now, that mark, obviously, can't be any smaller than this mark. But if it's a little bit bigger, that's fine. And you know, at this point, um, I don't know, say you had a third brake light on the parcel shelf, you could integrate that into the, into the bond, just whatever you do, and then black it in. But just for now, what I'm gonna be doing is making, um, making a line that perfectly follows the outer line all the way around this, and then blacking that in. Okay then, so to get this perfect border, what I've done, I've um, got a piece of Fomex, drilled a hole in it, got the tip out of the Posca pen, uh, 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 shove that through there and then what I'm looking for on this is what's the widest bit where is it the widest and I think maybe here oh that's pretty wide that is so I'm going to go a little bit wider than that and what I'm going to do is put a screw in there screw through there and then this will give me my there we go on the corners always keep it I think the word's perpendicular, but that sounds a bit fancy. Uh, always perpendicular to there, and run it round. Okay then, so I've masked it up now, and we've got some nice radiuses here, so it looks, you know, looks the real deal. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get rid of all my markings. Now, I know I've done it in black, but, you know, you might only have like a, I don't know, say like a white Posca pen or something like that. And of course, this is the front face of what we're going to do, so any mark on here will show once we've got the silicon on it. Uh, so just get rid of those because you just might see them and sometimes you know the ink out of pens looks a little bit bluey against the black but you can see it and you will see it in the uh, in the bonding so let's get all this off right so we're ready to put some silicon on uh, <clears throat> and then with a bondo spreader we are just going to spread it out, and I reckon you want it to be, I'm going to say two millimetres thick, is probably the, uh, the ideal sort of thickness. So you've got enough opacity in it that it looks black, and, um, and it's fully covered. Also, try not to get it too thick. Um, up to the edge because when you pull it off it will make like a it will make a ridge around the edge so that's it I so I've tidied around the edge. I'm not too worried about the other side of the glass because I'll be able to flip that over and with a standing knife blade, I'll be able to get any little bits off. Now, the part we come to here is never just leave this. Never think, oh, I've done that. I'll remove the masking when it's dry. You'll never get the masking off. So what you've got to do is take the masking off when it's wet. So what I always try to do is pull up 
and across the paint. That way, if you get any sort of like, you know, like when you get the cheese on a pizza and it goes, it will fall back onto the, the silicon and not onto the clean glass. So that's what I'm going to try and do. That's done. The thing to do now is to leave it to dry and make sure it's fully dry before we fit it. And we'll be fitting it probably in about two seconds time. For me it'll be a few hours, but for you it'll be right now. Alright, so we've got the rear window here. It's got this black silicon band around it and we're about to bond it in to this recess, this fiberglass recess that we've made in the back of the non-standard. Um, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to go run around with some silicon and then bond it in. And remember, if you're using silicon, silicon will only stick to silicon, and silicon's also the only thing that will stick to silicon. So if you use silicon here, literally the same tube of stuff on there. Right, let's get to it. Let's get this glass bonded in and let's see how awesome this bonded screen is going to look. Right now what we're going to do, we're not going to go anywhere near that, we're going to leave it with some pressure on overnight, let that dry, so uh, let's leave it well alone. Okay so here it is, um, it's now outside and sadly it's a bit more of a damp day, but you can still make it out. It's a beautifully bonded uh, rear screen, looks super tidy, no nasty rubber trim, this where the glass almost seems to float above the deck lid all looking really nice and really cool and just sleek and it's, it's really tidied and cleaned up the back of this car so much. Okay then, so now let's hide that old uh, grubby Pinto with a super cool engine cover. Okay, so what we're looking at, um, this is the uh, engine cover, uh, the non-standard. Now, this goes over what is, it's just a Pinto engine. It's in pretty good nick, it runs nice, got a little bit of an oil leak, but you know, I don't know. Um, but rather than dress up the Pinto engine, which is always gonna look like a Pinto engine with a few chrome bits on it, I made this cover. I started out with a Audi A8 engine cover, and that's where these rockers come from. And I made all this in fiberglass, but just because I'm redoing the car, it looked pretty cool as it was, but because I'm redoing the car, why not add a little bit more? So I've got this piece of steel, which is the back plate off of like a pallet pump truck. But I just thought, oh, it looks so cool, like it's got some crazy induction system. So, um, yeah, I'm fitting that on. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna paint this body color. We're gonna re-black all this part. Um, gonna leave the gold rocker covers. And then there's these bits that, um, I think that's where that goes, something like that. They fit um, around the engine in the car and uh, they're going to be body colour as well, so lots of nice shiny paint under the bonnet, um, you know, a little bit of chrome and stuff, just makes it look better. If you're at a show and someone says, can I see under the bonnet, you open the bonnet and everything looks nice, you don't have to see the dirty old engine. Now, what a lot of people are going to be thinking is, well, that's just fitting a fake engine in a car, and in a way it is, but... If you look at a lot of um, top American show cars at the minute, they'll have a cover over the engine. Um, they'll have a lot of metal work covering the engine, making the engine look nicer. I've got to say that's usually a V8 and then it looks like a V8. This is a four banger, which looks like a V8. But at the end of the day, if you've got a daily driver and you know you can have a really nice car, Mercedes, Audi, something like that, look under the bonnet and all you see is engine cover. You know, we're not in a time where you open the bonnet and you see the actual engine. Everything's under a plastic cover. Well, anyway, that's my excuse, and I'm doing it, and it's going to look cool. So, uh, let's get on. Okay, then. So, um, the engine cover uh, is here, and it's painted now. And I've bodyworked that, and it's looking pretty good. Um, it's a little bit ripply here, but the... Um, 
the cap for the radiator goes there. So that's going to look pretty nice. And I did uh, these bits as well. These go <clears throat> down the side. I think that goes there when it's in the engine bay. So everything should look really cool. Also, when I was doing this, you might remember I've done the, um, I've put the bigger windscreen wiper motor in, and this uh, cover that goes around the engine, it didn't fit anymore, so I had to cut this hole in it, and then I thought, well, that's just sticking through that motor is. And I found this, don't even know where it's from, it's some sort of plastic cover for something, but that's going to go on there, and that hides the windscreen wiper motor, and it looks pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to be fitting the engine cover. Uh, we painted it over the last uh, couple of days and now it's time to go in. So let's have a look at the engine first. Scruffy, dirty old Pinto. Quite reliable, quite fast, oddly enough. Things got hotted up, can. Um, and a brand new car. <laughs> uh, but it looks a bit grim. So let's go in with the engine cover. So it fits in just like that. Goes over the web there. We just have to move the. There's a washer bottle out of the way. Washer bottle out of the way. That's it. There we go. Um, how I initially made this, um, I, I taped over this, the front scuttle, and then um, I moulded the fiberglass to it, so that's why it fits. Just so damn well. So there we go, engine cover in. Next up, we just got to fit the side panels and then that's all good. This has just got a few screws that hold it in place. It's nice and easy to remove if you need to do any maintenance. Another bit that I made, if we look down this side of the engine, we have the horn. We also have this um, dial that changes the, you know, the speed of the, uh, the fan and stuff. But it's all sort of old car. It's painted, it's all painted black, so it looks okay. But this looks a lot better. If we fit that into there. That just looks loads nicer. Now all this is, this is just a piece of steel that I cut out. I made a cardboard template, cut this out, uh, put a few dimple dies in it. Dimple dies make everything look good, and they are just so easy to do. Buy a dimple die set, just easiest thing in the world. I put a bend in it. This bend is, you know, literally just in the vise and that's it. But yeah, when that goes in there, it just hides a lot of the scruffy stuff and it looks really nice. And the fact you can see a few pipes and stuff underneath, it only adds to it. So then, I'm going to fit that in. Um, what I'm going to fit it in with, I'm just using these like roofing screws because there's nothing behind this um, inner wing. It's all, uh, it's all open, so the fact that they're a bit long doesn't matter. I've painted the heads black, and I'm going with a nice, clean, new washer on there. And there we go, for very little effort, you know, that just looks a lot better. Now, I'm going to do the other side, uh, so uh, let's get back and do that. You saw before, um, we've changed the uh, wiper motor in this, but as with all hot rodding, whoa, look at this, we had to cut a big hole in there to pop this um, new motor through because it's just so awesome and powerful. So we've got to cover that up. So as we saw before, we found this in the interesting parts and stuff that I always keep. And what we're going to do is we're going to mount that on there so it covers that up nicely and what I'll do with that is I'll just stick a flex that onto there and then that hides a multitude of seams and there it is, you know, under the bonnet looking really really good, really really nice and just a great improvement. I did use these little allen headed bolts that look quite nice but I don't know why but I've painted over them so I'm going to put these chrome caps over so they look really, really nice. Uh, these are just um, 
you know, get these from anywhere. I think the mirror fixing, something like that, and they come with a little clip, clip over the head of screws. I always keep them. Things like that that haven't got to come apart. Um, I'd always just stick these over. It just dresses things up, just makes things look a little bit nicer, a little bit more chrome, so it's a bit cooler. looking really nice like looks super shiny everything's nice everything's right all looks good every all the crap is covered up and finally and this is one of the last jobs uh, on the standard enzyme we've got to secure that roof line in we stuck it back up it still wasn't quite good enough uh, so if you saw the video before of this car that we did on this channel, we um, we took it out for a test drive. One of the big problems with it was the headliner just kept falling down. And um, very hard to glue a headliner up, especially when it's summertime, the roof gets hot and it can fall down. So what I did, so as I was stri stripping down the taxi that I made into the WTF 100, I noticed in the headliner it had these which are like a pre-curved thing that holds a headliner up in them. So I thought, I'll put those on top of this and that will look really nice. And it, it does, it looks great. I had to shorten them by about four inches to get them in there and then we just screwed in, but it's worked really well. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build on this success. What I'm gonna do is get some of this, again, this, uh, this stick on chrome. And a lot of 50s cars had this where the strip across the roof is actually chrome. And I'm going to stick them to all of those bits and we'll have a really good headliner. So from something that was like the shame of the car to something that's going to be a, a real top bit. There's the first one in. And that looks pretty damn cool. You know, this plastic trim is quite nasty, but um, used in the right place, it can really set things off. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna get this PU sealer, and I'm gonna pull this down and drop some spots underneath it and at both ends, just to make sure it stays, because it's stuck there for now. But I never really trust this sort of self-adhesive stuff, so I'm just gonna give it that extra bit of support. And so that is it. The enzyme is complete. Um, it's been a great job. It's a lovely car. It's just, it drives nice now. It looks cool. Everything's sorted on it. And I'm going to say this one is finished. But, oh man, have we got an just awesome project coming up starting next week? Tune in. It's just going to be mind blowing. Starting another enormous project. This one is going to be awesome. And we are basing it on, I don't think it's going to be any surprise, but it's going to be based on this taxi. So what are we going to do to this taxi? What we're going to do, a little bit like last time, we're going to put the F100 front on this taxi. Uh, and it's going to have the, the cab as well. And you're thinking, well, you've already done that. Well, I've not done this. We're going to make it into like a Luton style you know like a like an airstream caravan it's going to be like an airstream caravan on the back and it's going to be high it's going to come all the way back we're going to extend the chassis back to here it's going to be huge all of this is going to look like an airstream caravan everything on the front is going to look like the wtf 100 except we're going to have like some rust and patina up there and all the back of this is going to look like polished aluminium going to have a cool art deco rear. In fact, you know what? It's going to look like this. Somewhere here or somewhere there, you should see a sketch of just how it's going to look. So don't forget, join us next time. And remember, click subscribe, give us a thumbs up, uh, click that bell icon. If you don't click the bell icon, you won't know when there's another brilliant edition of Custom Works coming up. 
And until next time, which is going to be awesome, goodbye.